Welcome to Health and Harmony Beyond the Teeth, where we dive into all subjects that will help you become healthier and happier. As a dentist, I believe dentistry is more than just teeth. So I created this show to focus on overall health. We will hear from leading experts about eating better, exercising better, breathing better, and sleeping better. We want to help you create harmony in your life so you can live your life to the fullest. We want you to thrive. Hello, welcome to Health and Harmony Beyond the Teeth. I'm Dr. Hal Stewart, your host. It's glad to be with you today. I've got a really important message about a crisis, a health crisis going on in America. It's sleep disorder breathing. And you might ask, what's a dentist uh, doing talking about sleep disorder uh, breathing? And what is sleep disorder breathing? Well, sleep disorder breathing can be identified as anything from the mouth, uh, breathing to snoring, anything that inhibits uh, our oxygen flow to our lungs. Sleep apnea is actually when we stop breathing while we sleep. So what happens is a patient, a person uh, gets into the deep sleep, the muscles relax in the mouth, we go into a paralysis state, which is what we do when we get into that deep sleep. The, if the airway is restricted, the back of the throat just closes and we stop breathing for 10 seconds. So we exhale, we have a collapse, we don't breathe for 10 seconds or more. Some people stop breathing for as much as 60 seconds. If we do this five times per hour or more, then as an adult, that would be diagnosed as obstructive sleep apnea. And this silent crisis is a crisis because of the comorbidities or the diseases or ailments that uh, are associated with sleep apnea. There's just a few here listed, uh, as you can see. This is just a few of them. There's a lot more. I want to talk mainly today, though, about children. Look at these four children. Are they healthy? Uh, the young man on the left, um, he's got the full, full um, you know, kind of fatty cheeks and his lower face is shrunken in. Um, he's not breathing well. Look at the little girl below him, the bags under her eyes. She looks like she's worn out. This is a child that's not breathing or sleeping well. Uh, the little girl uh, top right, uh, her lower jaw will really, really underdeveloped and her upper jaw, is, the upper teeth are protruding out, uh, just very small jaws. Look at the little girl on the lower right. Um, her head tilts one way. Um, that is all a result of underdeveloped jaws, which is the primary cause of sleep disorder breathing. So I want to concentrate uh, in this episode of the next primarily on children, how we can prevent this. This next picture you're seeing here, that's a perfect five-year-old child as far as the development of his or her jaws. Notice when they bite down, there's spaces between the teeth. Uh, the upper teeth don't completely cover the lower teeth. You can see half of the lower teeth. The jaws are nice and rounded. That's what a healthy five-year-old should look like, not like the child uh, on the left uh, that you saw earlier with the buck teeth and the crowded teeth. Um, we want to see normal craniofacial growth. Normal meaning that the upper and lower jaw grow together uh, in a proper way so that our air passages, our nostrils and the, our passage of air through the mouth are open, patent, um, and that they're, we, we're getting the full amount of oxygen, the full amount of air, when we exercise, when we work, when we eat, uh, when we're watching TV, and yes, when we're breathing. It's important to have good airflow and an open airway all of the time. So if you look at this slide, where did this come from? These teeth that are uh, lined up one behind the other, they're crowded, they're going in all different directions. We have a, a huge overbite you see in the one picture. Um, that's not normal. How did this happen? Well, research by Dr. Robert Coraccini showed that before the Industrial Revolution, 
So a couple of, uh, I'm sorry, six, seven hundred years ago. Jaw sizes were big enough that all teeth, all 32 teeth were in the jaws. They were not crowded. They were lined up. We didn't see, he didn't find uh, any skulls to speak of in doing his research. He's a, he's a forensic anthropologist of crowded teeth prior to the Industrial Revolution. Um, when you look at population studies now, within we're about seven generations after the uh, Industrial Revolution, after the first generation of the Industrial Revolution, 50% of the population had crowded teeth, whereas 100 years before, there were no crowded teeth. After the second generation, 70%. And after the third generation, 85% of the skulls that in people that he studied had crowded dental arches. Have teeth gotten bigger? No. Teeth have stayed the same size. Jaw sizes have gotten smaller. The airway starts in the jaw. And if the jaw size is smaller, the airway is smaller. He also did population studies of indigenous uh, People, peoples around the world in rural populations, people that were eating from the earth, uh, eating healthy, they were exercising. And he saw wide dental arches. He saw really nice paint and nostril flow of air. These patients didn't suffer from all the com comorbidities that we suffer from here in the United States. And these population studies support Dr. Coricini's research in that if we maintain a good, or if we're, we develop our jaws normally, primarily the maxillary, the upper jaw, that's the main one affected, then we'll have an open airway. We won't suffer from breathing problems. Things like asthma, uh, sinus congestion, uh, all of those things that are associated with undeveloped jaw just go away when people have their jaws expanded or where, when, when, when people are, they develop normal jaws from childhood. So why do we have these, this epidemic of, of small jaws in this country and a, a pandemic worldwide? Well, the reason why primarily I bring up the Industrial Revolution is after the Industrial Revolution, we started eating processed food. And processed food is softer, less nutrition, our uh, chewing system didn't have to work as hard. Uh, muscle and bone wasn't stimulated because we're basically mashing our food, um, you know, lightly between our teeth. We're not eating um, raw vegetables and we're not eating, you know, meat that, that, uh, that, that came from, you know, the wild and we had to chew it. And um, children before the Industrial Revolution and before, you know, uh, formulas and bottles uh, b became, um, you know, popular. Children were pretty much nursing um, on their mother's breast, and that helped strengthen the muscle and help develop the jaws. So the tongue is a huge uh, advocate for, well, it is the primary factor in developing normal-sized jaws. If the tongue is up in the roof of the mouth, it pushes up, it pushes out. We get these nice wide arches. We get a normal forming maxilla. Uh, the maxillary bone houses the uh, nasal passages. The floor of the nasal passages are the roof of the mouth. So if our maxilla bone, this upper bone doesn't grow properly, and if the tongue is not up in the roof of the mouth, pushing the jaw out, sideways, the tongue, the, the jaw develops very narrow and with a high arch. Well, that encroaches on the nasal passages. So now we can't breathe well. We have a deviated septum. Dr. Ben Moralji, I was talking with him and Ben said, you know, people with deviated septums, they just say, well, I have one good nostril and one bad nostril. Well, no, you have one bad nostril and one worse nostril. Uh, deviations other than uh, someone getting punched in the nose, they're a boxer or something like that, uh, a, a deviated septum, which encroaches on one sinus, 
is a direct result of underdeveloped jaws. So we were meant to eat, we were meant to eat um, and chew our food strongly, stimulating bone growth. That hasn't happened since the Industrial Revolution, or it's gotten less and less and less. They, these things that affect the growth of our jaws or any other part of our body are called epigenetic factors. For instance, uh, there is uh, a culture, uh, I'm not sure what, it, but I, I, we're probably all aware of, of uh, I think it's uh, in the Far East where the young women, their feet are bound. And because small feet are uh, a sign of beauty in, in, in this culture. So uh, the girls from a, a very, very young age, their feet are bound, so their feet don't grow properly, and they have these tiny little feet. Well, their DNA, their genes did not call for tiny little feet. Their genes called for normal-sized feet, but an epigenetic factor came into play and caused a uh, underdevelopment of the feet. So we see that 98% of patients with uh, obstructive sleep apnea is due to abnormal anatomy in the uh, breathing, our breathing apparatus or our, our nose and our upper jaw. And so the first thing that we do when we uh, look at a patient is we're looking at their face. We, we can see these uh, underdevelopments just looking at someone's face as a, as a sleep and, and cr craniofacial and growth and development um, expert. Um, and so one of the first things we ask is, do you breathe through your nose or do you breathe through your mouth? Most of the time, yeah, I breathe through my mouth. Uh, I can't breathe through my nose very well, so I breathe through my mouth. The difference in breathing through your nose and breathing through your mouth is huge. Um, breathing through your nose is like eating whole grain, um, organic, uh, pasture-raised uh, food, um, food that doesn't have chemicals on it, just healthy, healthy food. That's nasal breathing. Breathing through the mouth is like eating uh, at a fast food restaurant every day. You can live and function with both of those diets but you're going to live longer, you're going to live healthier, you're going to live a whole different level of, uh, of life if you're eating healthy than if you're eating junk food every day. When we breathe through our nose, we have pneumocytes in our uh, ethmoid sinuses that release nitric uh, oxide into our air. The nitric oxide is carried into the um, lungs. The blood vessels expand because of the nitric oxide and we absorb much more oxygen than when we breathe through our mouth. We also, when we breathe through our nose, our air is filtered. It's not dirty. We filter it from the hairs and the mucus in our nose. It's humidified and it's warm. When we breathe through our mouth, there's no filtration. So our tonsils pick up, you know, all the debris or a lot of the debris a lot of it goes into our lungs. Um, it's not humidified. It's not. Uh, it's dry, dry air. It's not warmed, and it doesn't have the uh, nitric oxide uh, infused into the air. So there's a huge difference in breathing through the mouth, breathing through the nose. So some of the comorbidities, children that don't sleep well because they can't breathe well. Um, they will wet the bed. Nighttime urinesis or bedwetting is a, a, a huge comorbidity of sleep disorder breathing. We get a child breathing correctly, they quit wetting the bed. ADD and ADHD. So there was a study, a research study by Dr. Karen Bonuk who studied over 11,000 children. And she found that symptoms of children that were diagnosed with ADD uh, and children that were diagnosed with sleep disordered breathing were exactly the same. Their symptoms were exactly the same. Uh, to carry that one step further, the children that had sleep disordered breathing, when they were treated, their ADD symptoms went away. So I have no doubt in my mind that uh, ADD, ADHD, those are just uh, terms that describe a set of behavioral 
patterns and, and, and symptoms. Um, when those symptoms go away, they're no longer ADD. These kids, when we get them breathing better, they quit wetting the bed. They uh, are socially, uh, they fit in better socially. They're not problematic at school and they learn better and their grades go up. Uh, it's really concerning to me that we have so many children now. I mean, elementary kids, they're on anti-anxiety drugs. They're taking medications at seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. It's really sad because they feel like they're relegated to those medications for the rest of their life. But taking a pill, anytime you take a pill, there's a side effect. When we know if we can get these kids breathing better by developing their jaws, they're going to be healthier. They're going to have better immune systems. They're going to... Uh, be free from drugs, they can handle their anxiety much better, um, they're better students, they make better grades. Breathing is everything. We can only go so long without breathing. We can live three to five days or so with no food, I mean with, with no water. Uh, we can live maybe up to a month, you know, with no food. You can't live more than about three, four minutes without breathing. So breathing is everything. So that's one reason, or the primary reason that I got into dental sleep medicine was to help people sleep better. Then as I went down that rabbit hole, I started realizing from the more research I did, the more literature I read that the sleep disorder breathing is all from underdeveloped jaws. So we can now help adult patients even adult patients who have underdeveloped jaws, surgery to increase the jaw size and having maxillofacial surgery has been around forever. And that is one way of, 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 of correcting jaw size is to do um, surgery. We can bring the jaws forward. But we really can't expand the jaws much with surgery. So while surgery has its place, we can expand our adult patients' jaws with appliances now that uh, are removable, can be taken in and out of the mouth. Over a period of time, we can expand the jaws, treat TMJ issues doing that because the majority of TMJ issues are um, from underdeveloped jaws too. And the lower jaw has to fit inside an underdeveloped upper jaw that puts pressure on the joint. The vast majority of TMJ issues are related to underdeveloped jaws. Um, but we can treat all of those issues at one time with appliances, or I call them pneumopedic orthotics, that promote expansion of the jaws. Now, the jaws are not going to expand any more than your DNA calls for. So the only, there, there, there are no drawbacks. They, all of the results are positive. Breathing better, uh, feeling better. Your nasal congestion goes away and you develop some cheekbones and your face looks better. With children, children, their little jaws and the little bones are like modeling clay. If we can get to children early on, we can help prevent years and years of sickness and disease, uh, not to mention all the dental problems that occur with small jaws. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next episode is how do we specifically treat these uh, conditions? The most important thing though, there's different ways to treat ailments or diseases, but there's only one correct diagnosis and making the correct diagnosis is really everything. Um, that's what we specialize at our practice is first, getting a patient in, finding out what all of their issues are. What are they suffering from? Then we look at the clinical data, the objective data. How big is their airway? What does their sleep study look like? Um, what do their dental arches look like? What do their tonsils look like? Uh, do they have high blood pressure? I mean, the list goes on and on. We put together then uh, in collaboration with the, the physicians that we work with and the sleep medicine specialists, other sleep medicine specialists, 
and myofunctional therapists and chiropractors that we work with, we, we put together a whole picture of what's going on. Because most of the time, it's not just one thing. It's not just, well, make your jaws grow. Uh, let's get bigger jaws, everything will be fine. That's huge. And that is one of our goals for pretty much all of these patients. But there's other things involved too that might be restricting the airway. So working with, in collaboration with um, specialists who do things outside of our wheelhouse, but doing them all in the interest of the patient getting healthy. And it's been wonderful. We work with a world-renowned ENT out in Los Angeles, Dr. Saroosh Zaghi. He's been on this podcast before. Um, I'm on his teaching faculty out there in, in Los Angeles. Uh, we work with uh, Dr. Barker out in Southlake, not far from our office. And Dr. Gray, his, his partner, uh, they are cranial sacral subspecialists in, but they're doctors of osteopathic medicine, but they have a bent towards uh, this, the head and neck, getting things aligned, getting things in balance and harmony. We work with the local ENTs uh, when we send patients for tonsil surgery. They have their tonsils removed. We work with chiropractors. We work with myofunctional therapists, huge. Myofunctional therapy is huge in this, training the muscles of the mouth and the tongue, uh, you know, how they're supposed to work and getting them to work for us and not against us. So it takes a collaborative effort, which is what we do. And I would uh, encourage you to tune into the next episode where we're gonna talk about specific treatments for these issues. But I hope that I've shed a little bit of light on this uh, problem that we have going on in, in America and really worldwide in our sleep disorder breathing. Um, people that, that, that adults that suffer from sleep apnea, if it's severe enough, their morbidity or their, uh, mor morta their, their mortality rate goes way, way, way down. Their, uh, their risk of dying during their sleep, the higher that obstructive sleep apnea gets, the, their chances of actually passing away while they're sleeping um, increases dramatically. So if this podcast can just get people looking at, hey, maybe I need to go get this checked out, go see a sleep specialist, which, whether it's a dentist or, or a physician. If they're practicing sleep medicine, go to them, get di diagnosed, get, get examined. Um, be around a good, a long time. Don't, you know, don't die of something that can be easily treated and easily prevented. So the next episode, we'll talk about those symptoms. So if you're, uh, if you're interested or know somebody that maybe you know that suffers from this, have them watch our next episode. For now, I'll say goodbye. This has been Dr. Hal Stewart with Health and Harmony Beyond the Teeth. <laughs>